So thank you for the introduction. So I'm Bob Stewart and myself and David Northcote want to present to you in some spectrum monitoring for spectrum sharing using the Xilinx RF SOC technology. So very pleased to be here at Wincom 2021, albeit uh, stuck in Scotland rather than at a real event. So to value something, you need to measure it. So that's really the uh, the idea here. Let's measure uh, what content we have in various low and mid band uh, spectrum. And as part of some spectrum sharing strategy, if we have enough data, maybe we can do things more effectively. So spectrum management allocation, you know, the traditional shared dynamic spectrum, all really of interest and relevance to modern wireless comms. Uh, SDR shared spectrum radios and remote radio heads. Well, things are happening now with the technology at the radio unit or remote radio head that really means that spectrum uh, monitoring is, is a bit of an add-on uh, given the type of technology such as the RF SOC. And uh, that radio design, whether it's RF SOC, uh, whether it's a traditional split 8 or, or split 7.2 ORAN, well, there's some interesting things that we can do. So we'll give you some demonstrations of how we've been taking the Ofcom database in the UK and mapping that uh, onto uh, the Spectrum Analyzer tool. So here's a simple idea. You have your Spectrum Management, your dynamic database, whatever that might be. And on your uh, remote radio head or radio unit, let's also have some Spectrum monitoring happening. So we're looking to see what energy is coming in different frequency bands, and we're going to be sharing that somehow, whether live or via database or otherwise. So here's a, here's a simple radio, disaggregated radio or a, a split 7.2 ORAN, whatever terminology you might want to use. And in the very far right, we have the, uh, the RF uh, gain stages. You'll probably be working in, in particular bands and you'll have suitable antennas, the gain, and then you'll go into the radio unit. So we've illustrated this uh, radio unit uh, as receiving in a couple of RF ADCs and DACs and it's using Xilinx RF SOC technology. And then coming out of the radio unit, you'll hop over to what was the baseband unit in a, a kind of traditional split eight or segregated radio and, and similar in the DU in, in ORAN terminology. And again, in this uh, unit, you'll be doing various aspects of the, uh, the hi-fi uh, of, of 5G and going further left, we'll then head off to our various uh, your core control backhauls and, and so on. So there's our kind of traditional radio uh, in some form. So let's just add some spectrum monitoring to our figure. So in the far right, we have another wide band antenna. So again, probably wider band than maybe your, uh, your main uh, radio transmit receive. And then as part of the, uh, the kind of lo-fi, the radio unit, let's add another channel of uh, something like the RF SOC, one of the ADCs, sampling at high gigahertz. And let's do some spectrum monitoring. And let's bring that data into some uh, form of spectrum management software, which could be local, it could be in the cloud. Uh, we would probably want to be uh, doing some form of monitoring live. We would do some form of historical database creation. But this type of information will give us a significantly better understanding of uh, what the spectrum mapping is on a, on a kind of wide geographical area if we have this type of monitoring happening at uh, our various uh, you know, private and, and, uh, and maybe public uh, radio sites. So that's the simple idea, and the technology is here. It's something we can do uh, right now. So David's going to give you some uh, demonstrations of the open source tool we've been working on uh, as part of our engagement with Xilinx and uh, uh, something that's uh, on a project in the UK called 5G New Thinking, where we're looking at using shared spectrum for private networks or non-public networks using 5G technology. Okay, so we're now going to review the Xilinx Radio Frequency System on Chip device. It's better known as the RF SOC. So the RF SOC is a member of the Zinc System on Chip family and is specifically targeted for RF applications. The device contains two primary components. These are the processing system and programmable logic. The processing system is host to an application processing unit and a real-time processing unit, and the programmable logic is host to Kintex Ultrascale Plus uh, FPGA logic fabric. 
So there are also unique RF resources, and these are known as data converters. There are two types of data converters, namely the RF ADC and the RF DAC. In 8x8 mode, the RF ADCs can achieve a sample rate up to 4,096 mega samples per second per channel, and the RF DACs can achieve a sample rate up to 6,554 mega samples per second per channel. Okay, so due to the heterogeneous processing environment of zinc devices, we can see, conceive embedded system development as a stack of layers. So Python productivity on zinc, better known as PINK, is a, addresses the complexity of zinc designs by providing a pre-configured stack of layers to support the developer. At the bottom of the stack is the hardware layer, which contains the FPG bitstream and hardware accelerators. And the software layer is in the middle of the stack and contains the operating system and existing Python software libraries that are supported by the Python community. The top of the stack is the applications layer, where the user can interact with the system through Jupyter and IPython. So I just want to uh, show you on the screen right now uh, the, the Jupyter Labs integrated development environment. The user interacts with Jupyter from a typical web browser. So the graphical user interface contains multiple resizable frames in one browser window and can support many different plugins for the typical developer. The important thing to take away here though is that Jupyter is hosted entirely on the RFSOP device and the user can access the environment entirely from a typical web browser. So I just want to uh, show you now a tool that we developed on the RFSOC and PINK framework, and this is the open source spectrum analyzer. This tool is entirely available from the user's web browser. The spectrum analyzer can achieve up to 2048 megahertz of instantaneous bandwidth and can achieve an inspection range up to 4096 megahertz using higher order microzone techniques. So it's got fully supported Python software libraries such as Plotly and IPy widgets, and they, they are used to present the spectrum and create a dashboard for system control. So as you can see on the screen now, combining the spectrum analyzer and uh, let's say the Ofcom database for the UK, uh, the spectrum database, this will allow us to inspect the map uh, and map spectrum bands in the environment. And this demonstration will explore four main sectors, the broadcast sector, the public sector, the license exempt sector, and the mobile and wireless broadband sector. Lastly, uh, it's quite important to note here that we're not uh, decoding or buffering the frequency spectrum in this demonstration, and we're not breaking any laws or regulations in this demo. So lastly, just before the demo, I'm just going to show you my hardware setup today. We're using an RFSOC 2x2 development board, which is specifically for approved academics, coming in at around $2,149. As Bob said, it's got a wideband antenna, very cheap, a small low-pass filter, and a little bit of amplification. And uh, now, straight on to the demo. So, uh, the demo you're seeing on the screen now, you should be able to see the Spectrum Analyzer and it'll be in the browser window. And uh, what you can see here is that we have uh, various signals being acquired across uh, Glasgow city centre today in Scotland. So as you can see, there's several widgets that allow us to control the analyzer, including the spectrum map tool, which is highlighted on the screen. So there are various spectrum sectors, uh, and we can click on the drop-down menu here that will reveal those sectors. And these include the aeronautical sector, the amateur radio sector, broadcasting sector, business radio, mobile and wireless broadband. But let's, uh, let's, let's focus on one sector for now. Let's go to broadcasting. And the spectrum map tool tells us all of the bands in the broadcasting sector. Included here is the FM radio band. So if we click on this particular band, you will be able to see that the Spectrum Analyzer tool has navigated to the FM radio band. And if we hover over on top of the band, we'll be able to see that the name of the band has been revealed and the frequency range has also been shown. And you can see that it's quite significant power there from FM radio stations across Glasgow, and we're able to pick that up on our small antenna. Now, we can also look at the digital audio broadcasting band. By clicking on the DAB radio band in the Spectrum Map tool, we'll be able to uh, configure the Spectrum Analyzer to navigate to the, the, the correct frequency. And uh, you can see on the Spectrum Plot window that the band has been correctly identified, and there's some power there from uh, the DAB uh, radio signals. And you see that the frequency range, by hovering over the band of interest, the frequency range is revealed, and the name of the band is also revealed. So, let's now move on to a different sector. Let's take a brief look at the public sector. 
which will contain the uh, emergency uh, services uh, signals that we can have a, a little look at. And I know uh, on one particular band, it ran about 393 megahertz. There's quite a lot of uh, signal activity and power. So I'm going to uh, use the Spectrum Map tool to navigate to that band. And by uh, clicking on 393 megahertz, roughly, I can find the public safety uh, band here. So as you can see, there's quite a significant amount of power. These signals are used by emergency services across Glasgow. Now, let's take a, a moment to look at the license exempt uh, radio spectrum here. So I'm just going to select it from the drop down menu. And uh, just to let you make you aware, in the UK, there is a license exempt spectrum band at 433 megahertz. So I have today a little remote control with me. And I'm just going to navigate to uh, that band using my Spectrum Map tool. I'm also going to turn off some post-processing in the Spectrum Analyzer, such as averaging. And I'm also going to turn on the Spectrogram, which is included in the Spectrum Analyzer. And what, using my little remote control, I'm going to start uh, shooting uh, some, some signals from it, just pushing a button. And we can see if, uh, the, let's say, the capture of uh, the, the webinar is fast enough, you should be able to see the Spectrum uh, popping up and down from a little signal, and the spectrogram should also reveal some uh, power uh, being uh, recorded, which is quite quite good. So excellent, and you can quite clearly see the signal power on the spectrum there. Returning now to the spectrum analyzer tool, I'm going to turn averaging back on just for the final part of the demonstration. I'm going to navigate to the mobile and wireless broadband sector uh, using my spectrum mapping tool. So specifically, we're going to be looking at downlink spectrum access around 800 megahertz. And so uh, there is a couple of mobile network operators in this particular uh, set of bands. And this includes uh, Vodafone 3, Telefonica, and EE. So I'm just going to click on Vodafone's downlink spectrum access. And you'll be able to quite clearly see in the spectrum plot window here, there are some signals. And the signals have been correctly identified uh, by our spectrum mapping tool. Which is, which is pretty uh, pretty good. You'll be able to see in the label that the mobile network operators have been correctly identified too, and the frequency ranges of interest uh, have been uh, identified. So it's a little bit extra today. I do have uh, something just a little bit extra to show. Uh, one last thing to demonstrate. So up until now, I've only shown the Ofcom spectrum mapping tool for the UK. I do have the alternative for the US uh, as a prototype. So uh, using the drop-down menu in the Spectrum Mapping tool, uh, we're going to swap from Ofcom to FCC, which is the Federal Communications Commission. And uh, we can select on a couple of sectors here. So I'm going to say, select the mobile sector. And we can see that several bands that have been allocated for mobile uh, use have been highlighted in the Spectrum Analyzer plot. We also have radio astronomy, which will be here. And we also have uh, space science and various others that you can see in the drop down, uh, drop down window. Uh, excellent. So although these bands aren't much use to me here in Scotland, they might be useful for you if you're from the US or in the US now. So then just to wrap things up, I'm going to leave the demonstration and return back to the slides and uh, conclude. So, so thank you, David, for the demonstration. So just to conclude and summarize, so today we, we live demoed and we introduced using the Xilinx RF SOC single chip solution for spectrum monitoring. We had an overlay of the Ofcom database and we were using what's called the pink framework, if you're interested, to build this open source spectrum analyzer. So live spectrum monitoring, uh, all the tools and uh, controllable parameters you would expect in an advanced spectrum monitor We've got an overlay of the Ofcom database. We can do other countries with those databases being available for a particular geography. And again, this is this is open source. And the idea of integrating spectrum monitoring in the radio unit, well, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty obvious one. If you've got some, some spare uh, RF ADC channels, you have appropriate uh, you know, wideband gain and you have a, a suitable wideband antenna, then it's something that comes at just a little bit of added extra cost. Not a great deal. And if you're spectrum monitoring uh, facility, then uh, we're not suggesting this is about policing, but you could be policing to see what shared bands are actually being, being used and when they're being used and you're reporting back centrally somewhere 
or making public databases available for people to see what's used and where. It's browser based, therefore uh, we can put these uh, spectrum analyzers on the network. It's also low cost, so this is a, this is a pretty low cost board compared to buying a kind of conventional uh, instrumentation uh, spectrum analyzer. And uh, just to conclude again, you know we think it's add-on functionality for uh, you know five G radios, whether they are uh, ORAN or traditional, more split eight, it doesn't really matter. It's something that we demonstrate now, and as part of the five G new thinking project, and our engagement with Xilinx, we we hope to show more in this and make this more widely available in the new year. So thank you for everyone's attention, and let me hand back to the uh, the, the chair of the Wincom session.